Hey everyone, welcome back to the Hashrafter YouTube channel. I hope you're doing well today. If you're new around these parts, be sure to hit that like button and hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate it. Today is really fun, guys. We're going to be going over the NVIDIA 3000 series announcements that took place this morning. I'm going to get you caught up on some of the things you may have missed, really a few of the highlights, and then we're going to over-speculate. We're going to generalize on what some of the efficiency and hash rates may be on these cards. Okay, first up out of the gate, I wanted to call out after the event, it took a couple of hours, but I kept refreshing the NVIDIA page, and they do have the 3000 series cards on the page right now, and there's a notify me button if you want to get information a little bit quicker, if you want to know when they become available. But I am going to go over all of the launch dates and all of the detailed specs that were at least given during the presentation of today. Now I spoke to my contacts at Zotac and their engineering samples have not arrived yet for testing. So I'm guessing that their launch dates are probably going to be very similar to what I'm going to show you here in a moment, if not a little bit later. And I'm guessing that would probably go with all third party manufacturers as well. Okay, very quickly, I want to touch on a few of the high points that don't directly relate to mining, but that you may be interested in if you don't want to rewatch the whole event. There was quite a bit on the second generation of RTX and the deep learning, DLSS, which of course for miners, those are two pieces of technology that we don't need. And unfortunately, unless we are using our machine for gaming as well, that's really just overhead from the price standpoint, and it kind of drags down our efficiency and our ROI. Now they did say Ampere has two to eight times more performance than the Turing architecture, and that was sort of a generalized statement based on multiple tests that they provided examples of during the presentation. They did talk about how much more efficient it is, and that's something I'm really interested to put to the test as a miner. We want to get that power down and get it as efficient as possible. Lastly, they talked about the RTX IO. So this is new technology, which streamlines data from the SSD storage to your GPU. And in essence, what the situation is, is that the CPU is at times becoming a bottleneck. And this new RTX IO technology seeks to eliminate that as data is being pulled from these really high speed SSD drives and being able to pass that a little bit more easily directly into the GPU. Okay, here we go. The first one up, the 3090, AKA BF GPU. <laughs> this thing is just a monster. It has 24 gigabytes of GDDR6X memory, or I believe they just shortened that here to G6X, which sure would make it a lot easier to say. It's got a whopping 5,248 cores at $1,499. Now let me say this, at the end of all of this information, I'm gonna provide you some links to some charts that will help you compare all of these side by side and even get a snapshot of what's going on with these versus AMD. They claim that the 3090 was 50% faster than the 2080 Ti. It has a TDP of 350 watts and it's being named the Ampere GA102-300. And it is shipping September 24th. Now that is from their presentation. If you Google around, you'll see some other dates that look to be incorrect. You'll see some that say September 17th, but I think that they just typed that incorrectly. From NVIDIA, it says September 24th. Now onto the 3080. This has 10 gigabytes of G6X memory, 4,352 cores at a price point of $699. The TDP is gonna be 320 watts and it is being named the Ampere GA102-200. And this is expected to ship September 17th. And the last GPU in their announcement today was the 3070. This has eight gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. So I don't know if we can call that G6 memory now, but notice it's not the 6X. 2,944 cores at a pretty respectable price of $499. They said that this is faster than the 2080 Ti. They didn't really quantify that, but take that for what it is. It has a TDP of 220 watts, and it is being named the Ampere GA104-300. This is to become available in October. A few items of note is the new 12-pin connector on these GPUs, and I've 
provided some information on Twitter. I'll show you guys what that's going to look like here. But for miners, what that may mean is that we have to consider either new power supplies or we're going to be getting adapters for our existing power supplies. We'll have six pin adapters to go into these 12 pins. And I wasn't surprised. I was a little disappointed though. There was no news on a 1660Ti slash super replacement. And what I mean by that is we didn't see anything from a non-RTX standpoint. We didn't see anything on the 3060. And we also didn't hear anything about a 3080Ti or a 3070Ti. Now the super variants, I think it's pretty obvious why we didn't hear about that. Usually that's kind of a mid-cycle update. So I'm not too surprised we didn't hear anything on supers, but also here in the next month or so, it wouldn't surprise me if we see something on TI models being released. Okay, this next part, guys, is where things are gonna get a little interesting. I am going to overgeneralize. I'm gonna speculate and I'm gonna guesstimate on hash rates. And don't get too worked up. These are all just guesses. Now, I know that a lot of folks have looked at the specs of the cards and tried to make estimates based on what sort of hash rate they think it's going to get. I'm going to back into this a little bit differently. I'm going to take the information we absolutely know to be true based on price, power, and then what we as miners expect from an efficiency standpoint. And I'm going to try to come in and say, this is what the cards need to do, not necessarily what I think they are going to do. So let's jump right in with the first card in their lineup, which is the 3090. So what hash rates do they need to hit? Let me walk you through this. It's going to have a price point of $1,499, so a really big price tag. 70% TDP. This is, this is the first number right here that you can start increasing or decreasing. I think this is a good estimate of where miners like to be with the power draw on their cards. And at 70%, that puts us at 245 watts on this 3090. Now, if we desire an efficiency of 0.4 mega hash per watt or greater, now that's based on existing architectures, 0 0.4 or greater. This is another number. Guys, don't get too worked up on. You could increase this if you think Ampere is going to be 0 0.5 or 0 0.6 or whatever you think it's going to be. But let's just say for this discussion as a jumping off point, just to start, <laughs> start the conversation, 0 0.4 mega hash per water greater. The efficiency that this card's going to need to hit is going to be 98 mega hash at this price point. And really, I think it's going to have to hit somewhere between 98 and 150 mega hash. Now, 150 mega hash, that number seems a bit too big. It seems like it's really not even within the realm of possibility. I am curious if it could get anywhere close to that with the new 24 gigabytes of G6X memory. 24 gigabytes, guys. That's just an enormous amount. Now, if it did, if it did, things start to get interesting, but let's talk about the price. The price on this card, if we were gonna hit 98 mega hash, if we were gonna hit 98 mega hash, the card price really needs to be between 900 and $1,200. And why do I say that? Because two 5700 XTs at the time of recording are roughly $450 or less, some are more, some are less, just depends on what your make and model is, and quite honestly, whether you're getting a good deal, whether you're getting something on a flash sale or something like that. 900 to $1,200 is what it would need to make sense for us as miners. Now, a couple things to note. We are only considering F in this discussion, which really isn't fair to NVIDIA cards because they are really good at mining on other algorithms traditionally. We're also not considering resale value, which typically NVIDIA cards seem to outshine AMD on. And we're also not taking into consideration ease of use. The fact that you don't have to do any BIOS modding and a lot of testing and they're a little bit easier to take care of. You can just pop them in your rig and you can be off and running. So we're not really taking that into account in these overgeneralized, oversimplified assumptions here. Now, the one last piece I'd like to say on the 3090 is if it hits anything above 98 mega hash, if it got to 110, 120, then all of a sudden this price point starts to become a little bit more realistic. And if we could get these at maybe $1,299, all of a sudden, if you can make this the equivalent of two to three 5700 XTs, then it starts to get interesting because at 150 mega hash, you're at three 5700 XTs and this price point really makes a lot of sense. Okay, on to the 3080. Now the 3080 is at $699. 
it's 70% TDP would equal 224 watts and the desired efficiency at 0.4 mega hash or greater means that we need to hit 89.6 mega hash on this card which I don't really think is possible my complete guesstimate guys I don't know anything specific this is just a guess is that we'll probably see something more like 55 to 60 mega hash on this card based on the memory and a complete guess on the new architecture and if we are at 89.6 then the price it could stay right there at 699 this would make a lot of sense this would be a good buy but but if it's more like 55 to 60 mega hash this card the price it doesn't make sense for us to even look at it unless we get around that 500 dollars price point or less now let's move on to the 3070 the 3070 is at 499 dollars and at a 70% TDP, that gives us 154 watts on this card with a desired efficiency of 0.4 mega hash or greater, then the efficiency needs to hit 61.6 mega hash on this card. And if I were to make a guess, I think we're going to be more like 40 to 45 mega hash, but I could be completely wrong on that. The price, if we're at 61.6, could stay at 499 and that'd be a great buy, or if we're lower than that down in this range it really needs to be 299 or less at 45 mega hash so i don't think that this 3070 is really going to make any sense unless the price comes down but it is a good jumping off point into the next card which they did not announce and that is the 1770. now this is my name. I completely made this up. There's no leaks or anything like that. I completely made that up. But I am using that as a placeholder for a 1660 Ti replacement. I do think that there is a solid market for folks that don't want RTX functionality or they need to be in a sub $300 price point. And we've seen from NVIDIA they have no desire to leave that segment out. If anything, they have created so many SKUs and so many price points, we'll probably see three to six different SKUs within the sub $300 range. Now that being said, the 1770, what does the price need to be? Well, let's walk through that. 70% TDP on that. I think that it's gonna remain in the 70 to 90 watt range, this next generation Phantom card. It'll be based on the Ampere architecture, which is gonna be more efficient than the Turing architecture, but we shouldn't have RTX included in this model. Our efficiency desired would be 0.45 mega hash per water greater based on what we know of what would be pulled out of this card and what we know about the 1660 Ti. So that means that this card needs to hit somewhere in the 37.8 to 40 mega hash range. And the price needs to be $299 or less. If we get this, I think that this is going to be the next card for miners because it would be a natural evolution up from the existing 1660 Ti and Super. It would give us additional hash rate so we could better densify. I think that Nvidia is gonna to want to have a $279 card in their lineup. And eventually we'll see another $229 card, which would be the Super maybe a few months after. Now where things get really interesting guys is the Ampere architecture. You know, how much more efficient is that going to be and what does it mean for mining? I don't know. I could speculate, but it would be really exciting to see if we got efficiencies at 0.5 mega hash per watt or greater. What if we got 0.55 or 0.6? Then all kinds of fun discussions start to happen and the prices that we saw start to make a lot more sense on this lineup. Now we also didn't see the 3060. That's worth taking a look at here. I think probably because of the RTX overhead, this model, whatever it's gonna be called, the 1660 Ti replacement is gonna be what is gonna make the most sense. And of the three cards, at first glance, I, was, I, I immediately discarded the 3090 as a possibility. But let me just say, I think the wild card here is the 24 gigabytes of G6X memory and this enormous core count. I am immensely curious, even with the RTX overhead, the DLSS overhead, I am immensely curious what kind of hash rate this is going to bring here. I feel pretty confident it's going to be over 100 mega hash, 
but I could I could be completely wrong on all this guys but man wouldn't that be exciting if this was 150 mega hash at this price point we could actually buy it as a miner and you want to talk about helping densify your farm that would be a, a really amazing step up now I want to give you two resources guys in case you haven't seen them in case you want to start playing around with these numbers that I provided you if you want to start thinking through things in a different way in your head and make some modifications or make your own assumptions the first one is a link that I'm going to put in the show notes from WCCF Tech and it walks through all of the stats so that you could probably make some better estimates here and some better guesstimations on what kind of performance we're going to get so I'll put this in the show notes now the next one I want to share with you just for convenience, this is from futurecdn.net and I'll leave the link in the show notes, but this just gives you a lot of the very similar information on the AMD Navi Vega Polaris GPU specs in case you want to bounce back and forth and kind of match those up. For me personally guys, I think the best news is what is yet to come. I do think we're going to see sub $300 cards announced and it is completely in line with what Nvidia has done in the past to announce those you know, at a later date, within a month or two from their initial announcements. I wanted to get a little bit of uh, an overview out to you all in case you didn't get to see the event and in case you wanted a first look from a miner's standpoint. All of this could change. All of the assumptions could change the next week, the next month, and actually I'm sure that they will. But this is just a first guess, first stab at it, and uh, hopefully it just starts a conversation. So you guys let me know what you think. You let me know what kind of hash rates you think are going to be on our radar. Let me know if you think that any of these cards are worth it. And also let me know what you think about the 16. 60 Ti replacement. I'm real curious about what's going to happen there. Okay, we'll see you in the next video, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.